polls have opened in Lebanon. Candidates are vying for 128 seats that are divided among 11 religious groups. In the crisis hit nation, power is divided according to a sectarian power sharing system. While independent candidates hope to take on the ruling factions, established parties are still expected to maintain a grip on power. So who are the main players in the elections? Hezbollah is currently Lebanon's most powerful faction. It was founded back in 1982 by Iran's Revolutionary Guards. The Iran-backed group's political sway has expanded since 2018. In the last elections, together with its allies, Hezbollah won a parliamentary majority. Its influence over state affairs has surfaced in different ways, including through control of the health ministry. The second most important group is Amal. The Shiite movement is led by Nabi Berry, who has been the Speaker of Parliament since 1992. Berry has been one of Lebanon's most powerful figures since the civil war. Today, the Amal movement is the largest Shiite party in Parliament by a small margin. This brings us to the country's Sunni faction. Former Prime Minister Saad Hariri's boycott has turned Sunni politics on its head. The future movement established by his father has dominated Sunni politics for decades, but Hariri has decided to quit politics for good. This has left a vacuum in the country's Sunni leadership. Prime Minister Najib Bikati, another Sunni heavyweight and billionaire tycoon, is not running either. Another important party is the Free Patriotic Movement. It was founded by Maronite Christian politician Michel On. The FPM has been the parliament's largest Christian bloc. Currently, the FPM is led by On's son-in-law, Gebran Basile. Washington imposed sanctions on Basile in 2020, accusing him of corruption. However, Basile called the sanctions unjust and politically motivated. Another key player is the Lebanese forces. It is led by Maronite Christian Samir Jizia. The LF is one of Hezbollah's biggest opponents. The LF has stayed out of government since 2019, when then Prime Minister Hariri quit during nationwide protests. The election is also being contested by a group of parties opposed to the traditional ruling elite. While some have run before, others are venturing into electoral politics for the first time. Despite months long negotiations, the different groups were unable to unite or form a unified electoral platform or coalition to run at a nationwide level. Some districts even have multiple opposition coalitions running against each other. This further diminishes their chances of making a difference. Lebanon is holding its first vote since the 2019 anti-government protests. So, will the elections become a sign of hope or will they be yet another failure in the crisis hit nation? The elections are unlikely to yield a seismic shift. Despite a widespread discontent about the political class, Lebanon's political makeup has plagued the country since the civil war. The president should be a Maronite, the prime minister is a Sunni and the speaker of the parliament must be a Shia. It was meant to transition the country into a post-war situation. But what it did was allow the conflict to persist in Lebanon. The politicians separated their portions of the government, using the money to enrich themselves and their political class. This system has held back the emergence of non-sectarian political parties. The elections will be the first since the protests that broke out in October 2019. Governments have since failed to chart a path out of this crisis. So when the state failed to provide basic services, traditional leaders jumped in. Their decades-old patronage networks helped with handouts like fuel and basic goods. While the number of independent candidates has doubled since 2018, Lebanon's electoral law is designed to benefit established players. For now, the opposition is far from united. كيف قضينا اشهر وايام واسابيع عم نتظاهر بالطرقات اليوم كمان علينا مسؤوليه كلنا كناس انتفضت على هذا النظام انه مثل ما انتفضنا بالشارع كمان فينا ننتفض بصناديق الاقتراع The other risk is high abstention rates. Nearly 44% of eligible voters plan to abstain. Currently nearly 60% of the Lebanese diaspora has already voted in the polls. The overseas ballots will now be sent to the capital Beirut for counting only when polls close after nationwide voting on May 15th.
ناديين نغيها يعني ما حاجي انا اترك شغلي واحمل ابني اللي عمره سنه واجي بهالطقس 40 درجه الحراره وضحي من شان ما يتغير شيء يعني اكيد بدي يغير يعني صار لهم حاكميننا قديش بدك وين وصلونا يعني ما عاد قادرين ننزل نقعد ببلدنا نشوف اهلنا Last month, the IMF announced the approval of aid for the country. However, the final IMF approval is contingent on implementation of critical reforms. Lebanon's international donors have long demanded for these reforms, and to implement these reforms, Lebanon needs a strong government. This makes these elections particularly crucial. Lebanon needs it for aid and to show the world there is a way forward for Lebanon. For many, it is a sign of hope. But for others, it is a sign of looming disaster. We are still on that, and our correspondent Gadi Francis has been tracking all the developments from the streets of Lebanon. Take a look at her report. It's, it's different for each person that is going to the ballot box today. Each person has a different perspective even on the political system of Lebanon. Some people that uh, uh, support the resistance, the Lebanese Hezbollah resistance, say it is, a, uh, uh, it is a paper to tell the world that our support is from the ground, it is not from Iran, it is not from outside. So these Lebanese people want to prove that point. While on the other hand, some people from the civil society want to prove that they want a secular system, uh, for instance, and others. Each person going to the ballot box today has a different uh, reason for that. And this actually reflects the variety and the diversity diversity in the Lebanese uh, uh, society. We have 18 sects in Lebanon. We have many political parties and very different perspectives. Um, back to your question uh, uh, regarding the issues and the economical issues. Even on that, we have many perspective, uh, perspectives in Lebanon. Some people, especially Hezbollah supporters, see that it is a kind of a siege that the West is putting on the Lebanese society because of the presence of that stance in politics. While others that oppose Hezbollah say that Hezbollah is the reason for that siege, thus it is the problem. While in, in fact, uh, Muhammad, the political system, the economical and the social system, this, the whole sectarian system is actually the problem. It's not only one part of it. We On is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.